Hello and welcome! This is GBS8200 Video Signal Converter. I already made a detailed video about it and explained why I bought it back then. It is a useful device in some cases, especially if you want to convert analog RGBS signal, like it was used in Amiga for example. But I wanted to use it to convert CGA and EGA signals. And despite that this device advertises to be able to handle those signals, it is not. If you're interested, you can watch my older video, where I talk a bit more about it. My use case was just to be able to connect my CGA and EGA systems to a VGA monitor, to be able to test the graphics cards and use them for some gaming. Quite simple. Meanwhile, there are many great projects to convert all kinds of retro video signals. They are usually quite sophisticated and use an image buffer to recalculate the image. It makes those devices very flexible, but also introduces an additional delay. And in case you have a VGA monitor which supports down to 15 kHz horizontal and 50 Hz vertical sync, you actually don't need a buffered converter and can use something much simpler and cheaper. That's why back then I introduced this MCE adapter. It can be used with 15 kHz capable CRT and TFT VGA monitors, as well as with old RGBS monitors and devices like GBS8200, for example. MCE stands for MDA, CGA and EGA, so it supports all common TTL standards which were used on a PC back in the days. It happens that I have two TFT monitors which support required frequencies directly. A Bank BL702A, which I use in my workshop, and an EC LCD 1970NX, which I use for gaming. Due to very limited space, I have no CRT monitors. So this adapter accepts TTL video signal input and generates analog RGBS or VGA signal on the output. This IC does all the job, converts the colors, calculates combined sync signal, inverts it if needed, calculates color corrections, whatever. And here are some switches which can be used to set up the logic of the adapter. For example, switch 1 selects between monochrome and color mode where monochrome is MDA or Hercules and color is CGA or EGA. Switch 2 is for color mode and this will be very important for today's video. And switch 3 which selects between inverted or not inverted sig signal. By the way, this was one of the first prototype boards which I made and in the last video about this topic I already showed a more recent revision. However, I made couple of these adapters and the interest in the community was so high that I gave everything away what I had, keeping only this prototype at hand for the own use. However, there is one annoying thing about this adapter which I didn't like. As explained in my last video about this topic, CGA and low resolution EGA had so called brown color hack. The original IBM color monitors showed color brown every time when dark yellow was detected. I explained it in the previous video already, so please watch that if you don't know what I mean. The point is that on CGA and low resolution EGA the brown hack has to be activated, but on high resolution EGA not. But what does this mean in practice? Today I will use this OTI graphics card which has two outputs, analog VGA or TTL CGA EGA. Since we talk about TTL today, the TTL output will be used for the experiments. Well, let's take a look at the game Lemmings. When running in EGA, this game is special. Unlike other games and programs which usually run completely either in high res or low res EGA, Lemmings does both. The main menu of the game runs in high resolution EGA and if you are familiar with this game, you will notice that the colors are messed up completely. The buttons are brown, despite that they have to be yellow, and the background is almost black with some pixels sprayed here and there. This happens because the adapter is currently set to CGA and low resolution EGA, where a brown hack has to be applied and also not all of the intensity channels are used for the color calculation. I have to set the accordance switch on the adapter to high res EGA and voila, 
the colors are now right. We have yellow and we have proper brown in the background. Everything is fine. Now let's start the game by pressing F1. I have no mouse connected, but I just want to show you how it looks. And the game itself now looks completely messed up. Everything is yellow, brown colors are missing and it looks wrong. This happens because the main gameplay in Lemmings switches to low resolution EGA and relies on the brown hack. But the adapter is still in high res EGA mode, which expects separate intensity signals and applies no brown hack. Let's switch to low resolution EGA. And now it looks the way it should look. And again, if I now come back into the main menu, the game switches back to high res EGA, where I again have to switch the adapter back into the proper mode to have the colors right. This is very annoying as you can think, especially if the adapter is hidden behind your PC. As I said, most of the games don't switch the mode back and forward. In fact, Lemmings is the only one game which comes into my mind, but still, you have to touch the switches on the adapter every time you use another application dependent on the mode it uses. So I decided to rework this adapter and introduce an auto detection of the color mode. This can be easily done and probably has been done by the monitors back in the days in a similar way. The difference between CGA, low res EGA and high res EGA can be distinguished by the vertical sync signal. On CGA and low res EGA, vertical sync is almost always low and has positive pulses every 60 Hz. High res EGA, on the other hand, is almost always high and delivers negative pulses every 60 Hz. So, using a low pass filter out of a resistor and a capacitor, the horizontal sync signal can replace one switch and used as automatic mode detection. If it is low, we have CGA or low res EGA. If it is high, it has to be high res EGA. And this is the new revision. Here are still some resistors missing, but they are only used for sysync and there is no change compared to the old revision. The only main difference which I'd like to talk about today is the color mode. As you see, the new revision has no switches anymore. I replaced those with jumpers because they are easier to make and also can be connected to external switches if needed. Furthermore, we have now not three, but only two jumpers, because sync mode is not switchable anymore and is auto-detected as described previously. When using for CGA and any EGA, doesn't matter if high or low resolution, both jumpers have to be left unset. And there is no need anymore to switch anything. The adapter will detect the color mode automatically. Let me show you the game Lemmings once again. So, uh, we are in the main menu, which runs in high res EGA, if you remember, and as you see, all colors are good. The buttons are yellow, and we have brown color in the background too. Now I'll start the game. You can see that the colors are properly shown as well. I didn't touch the adapter anymore, and it just does the switch automatically on the fly. Other games do work, of course, as well. Here we have Monkey Island, for example. Here I would like to mention that, first of all, it is very important to use a good cable, especially on the TTL side. I usually avoid using a cable and insert the adapter with a gender changer directly into the graphics card, like this. Furthermore, you will have to adjust your monitor. Usually, VGA monitors, which do support clock down to 15 kHz, act far away from the usual specs and can have issues with resolution, pixel clock and phase. Here's for example Commander Keen. Here you can already see slide stripe. Here in the game we have another one. This is not an issue of the adapter, but more that the monitor has an issue with the clock. Commander Keen is a very special case anyway, since quite a lot of graphics cards have problems with it where the game often stutters and flashes during the movement. Also here you can clearly see regular vertical stripes when moving. Often it is sufficient to use auto calibration, but sometimes it will get even worse. However, these stripes can be removed by setting the right pixel clock. 
It is highly dependent on the monitor which setting you will have, but also resolution could be an issue and you wouldn't be able to use the full screen space. On my monitor there is no way to adjust the width and height directly, but it is possible to make the image centered. Yeah, still not quite in the middle, but you get the point. Here you also can see that the stripe disappeared and we have a very clean picture. The good thing is that this monitor remembers the setting and once everything was set, there is no need to readjust anything. Both text and graphics modes do switch well between each other. Ok, very nice. As I said on the old revision, there were three switches. One for mono or color, one for color mode and one for sync. The sync is now detected automatically and the color mode is also switched dependent from it. That means that one switch, or better to say jumper, on the new revision is free to use for something. The first jumper is used to select between color and mono mode. The second switch on the old revision was used to select between the color mode. In monochrome modes we could select between white and green mode and in color mode we could select between CGA slash low res EGA and high res EGA. On the new revision there is no need to switch between low res and high res EGA anymore. The adapter does it automatically. So now if the jumpers are not set we have color mode and if at least one of the jumpers is set we are in monochrome mode. With two jumpers this means that we have three possible settings and in addition to white and green color we can also do something like amber. And this is what I did. For testing I will take this Tsang Labs ET1000 Hercules graphics card which I already showed in one of my videos. Prince of Persia is a nice game to use with Hercules graphics adapter. Now if both jumpers are set we will have black and white color with intensity bit. So theoretically we can have three colors, black, green and white. Now if I set only jumper 1, we will get black and green color and again of course with intensity. And if I set only the second jumper, we will get amber. Well, at least kind of. It is more like yellow-ish, since I combined red and green colors to get there. But I also tried to inject a little of intensity bit where I need it. So we get slightly more in direction of amber. But this is as good as I could do. So now the adapter can emulate not only white and green, but also amber-ish. And this was the update on this project, which I wanted to share with you today. Just as always, of course, this is open source and you can find the link in the description. During the rework of this adapter, I made more layout improvements readjusted the resistors, improved the colors and sync signals a little bit. The revision is 0.10.1 and the Gerber files as well as the firmware are in the release area of the project. Please pay attention that the jumper settings have changed compared to the previous revisions and it's not enough just to flash the new firmware on the old revisions of the adapter. And so far I hope you found it somewhat interesting Thank you for watching and goodbye.